Every year, college football fans keep up with college football recruiting viciously as you get to see where the top players in the nation will end up going for their college football career and people start keeping up with them to see how they progress from high school all the way to the future in the NFL. But a common theme that is brought up every recruiting class every year, even during the college football season, is do stars really matter? This is B. Kelly, back again with another banger video, and in today's video, y'all, I am going to be talking about why stars do or do not matter and taking a look at both sides of the argument, favoring stars and not favoring stars. As usual, before I move on with the video, remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already as we are on the road to 10k. Now let's get into it. To start off this video, I want to make the statement saying that anybody that is playing a D1 sport in whatever sport they play in, and in this topic of video we're talking about football, even though the rankings go with every sport, is that no matter what your rank is, if you're still playing a D1 sport, any college sport like that, you are still a top athlete coming out of high school in the nation, whether you are a 5 star or an unranked player, because to keep it a buck, most high school players do not end up playing at the next level. And as you keep going up level by level, those numbers dwindle each time. Another thing I want to say before moving on with this video and talking about the main idea of this video is that a person's recruiting ranking can be affected by a number of things, such as not being on the best team, being on a team in a small division or being in a town from the middle of nowhere, not going to any of the camps that really get you noticed, and having coaches that don't really put in the effort to get your name out there. Those are just a few examples why some people do not get the looks that they might deserve or why they're ranked lower and have way less offers than others in their spot. The first argument that I will be looking at in today's video is the side that says stars do not matter. One of the biggest arguments on this side of why stars do not matter is the fact that the stars do not make the player. Now what I mean by this is that you have a bunch of three stars, even unranked players in the nation that don't even have a star to their name that end up being college phenoms and being straight up beasts on the next level in their pro football career and on the other side of things you do have five star players in every class that don't necessarily pan out to your expectations because the expectations are so much higher for five star players that it's a lot easier to be disappointing than to exceed those expectations if you're not completely balling out. Another common argument that comes up when people say that stars do not matter is an example of how you can have a team that has all the talent in the world and can be a team that can easily go to the playoffs if they just put it all together. But if you don't have the coaching, the development, or the culture, you're ultimately not going to live up to the hype or be that successful. A really good example to back this statement up is none other than Texas football. And Texas is one of the biggest brands in all of college football and college sports at that, as they have a lot of national titles to their name, but this past decade, even though they have all the talent in the world to be, well, a team that can win the Big 12 year in and year out, they have not put it together as this past decade, it has been nothing but mediocrity and disappointment. There are also plenty of examples out there of college football programs that don't get the biggest stars in the game or blue chip prospects, but they still have consistent seasons. For example, Oklahoma State has players that are not exactly the best coming out of high school, but they end up developing them into really good players that end up making the team that much better. You also have a good example of Cincinnati these last few years, a group of five team that isn't going to get five-star players every year and may not even get five-star players at all or even be considered by them, but yet again, 
They've been a winning program these last few seasons and even made the college football playoff. And all of this ties back into the argument of why stars do not matter because if you recruit and evaluate players well and develop them the right way with good coaching, you can still have a really good team and even be in national contention with some programs for a playoff spot or even have a chance of winning your conference and just making some real noise in college football in general. And on the other side of things, you can have some of the top talent in the league, but if you don't have the culture, the coaching or development, you could be set up for failure. Now flipping to the other side of the argument, the side that says stars do matter. One of the common things that is said on this side of the argument is that if you want to beat the best and to compete with the best, you have to have the best on your team. And a perfect example of this is look at the teams that are winning the national championship titles pretty much year in or year out or the ones that are competing for it. Especially if you look at the teams that are winning it since the year of 2000, you notice something. These are the biggest teams in college football, the teams with the biggest brands, the teams that not only get some of the best talent in the nation, but they have great coaching and good development. To make it more clear, if you're mainly a team of just three stars and you're playing a team that is equally well in development and coaching, but is primarily made up of five stars and even have five stars, four stars, and highly developed three stars as their depth people, it's going to be very hard to win that game. To enlarge the bigger picture with a recent example, imagine the 2020 Iowa State Cyclone football team. That was a very gritty and tough football team that had all the fight in the world and had a great season. Their best season in school history in fact, or at least it is in my opinion, as Iowa State is not a pretty football program. It's not a good football program, but these last few years they've developed the right way and they had a great season in 2020, their best one in school history. But is that 2020 Iowa State football team going to stand a chance with that 2020 Alabama football team? Probably not. Iowa State had their five-star culture, and that's great, and it's great that they can prove that they have a five-star culture with players that weren't necessarily seen as highly sought-after players coming out of high school. But on the other side of things, if you look at Alabama, they're getting the best players in the nation, and they have that five-star culture and development. They can turn three stars into superstars, and they can turn five stars into S-tier players. Now that we've looked at both sides of the argument, I am going to be sharing my thoughts on this matter, if stars matter or not. My response to this question is yes and no. I think stars matter and they do not matter, and this may not be the answer you are looking for, but let me explain myself. I think stars do matter in the fact that you do need to have some top tier talent on your team if you're wanting to win a national title. As if you're going to be a team made of well unranked players, you're more than likely never going to be Alabama, Georgia, or any other of those teams that are just going to be competing for that national title spot or anyone else that may meet you there. On the other hand, Stars do not matter to me in an individual player sense. What I mean by this is there are plenty of examples out there of low tier players coming out of high school. By low tier, I mean low ranking players that aren't really that sought after by really any teams at all that ended up being college football stars. A perfect example is Justin Jefferson who had a great career at LSU and is now a top receiver in the NFL. If we're being honest, there's plenty of guys who could be five stars that are really low ranked or not ranked at all because of a number of reasons that just affect their recruitment or just getting any looks at all. Well guys, if you made it this far in the video, comment something down below. Do stars matter? And before you head out, remember to smash that like button, turn on those post notifications, and subscribe for more videos. B. Kelly, out.